Hello and thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa where we discuss the biggest entertainment stories, lifestyle gist, celebrity gossip and um, so much more. Um, my name is Elsie Godwin and I've got my amazing co-anchors with me, Benny Ag and Nimi Dekombi. Hi Elsie. How are you holding on? Hi Nimi. Great. Mm -hmm. oh, so Practicing social distancing, mm -hmm. washing my hands frequently. Mm -hmm. um, Already have an OCD. Do you think this table needs to be extended so that our I think so because this is not this is not distant enough. So I mean, mm -hmm. manager should take note. Yeah. So let's we need let's a bigger teach, table, let's eh? lead the way. We need a bigger table so mm -hmm. we can actually let people see what it means to social distance. Mm -hmm. This is not good enough. So mm -hmm. I mean, but hey, just don't sit around me or cough around me. I just don't. Want me. <coughs> you know, okay, so. the producer needs to come and mic me now. I need to be set. <laughs> All right, well, a lot is going on right now, and um, I know we are all panicking, but it is advised that we stay calm and follow the measures um, put in place or prescribed by WHO, World Health Organization, and NCDC. Okay, so Nollywood actress Nse Ikwe Etim reveals she's currently under self-isolation for the next 14 days following her return from the United Kingdom. Idris Elba's wife confirms she has coronavirus but doesn't regret staying by um, the side of her husband. Harvey Weinstein tests positive to coronavirus and um, former vice president and former presidential candidate of Nigeria Atiku Abubakar reveals his son tested positive to coronavirus stating um, that the NCDC has been duly informed and he has been moved to Gwagwalada Specialist Teaching Hospital in Abuja for treatment and management. And according to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, as at 9.45 a.m. 23rd of March, there are 35 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria. Two have been discharged with no deaths. <clears throat> yeah, so that sums up the... Um, updates on coronavirus, especially in the entertainment space, and um, the current figure we have in Nigeria right now. Yeah. So I'll just start from <clears throat> the current figure, mm -hmm. and I'll say that the fact that there are 35 confirmed cases, I feel like there's a larger number Why do you that they've so? not yet tested. Okay. Because, you know, the 35 confirmed cases are the ones they've tested so far. There are mm -hmm. so many people they've never tracked down, according to what I heard. They've never tracked down all the people that were in, on a particular flight and the people that they have come in contact with. So I feel, I fear that the number of positive cases might be larger than the already confirmed ones that we've had. Um, because when you look at how it happened in South Korea, at first they had just 30 confirmed cases and then just one person managed to spread it to over thousands of people. So I'm just very, very scared and skeptical because the, um, the number of people that are confirmed keeps on increasing daily. So I hope that it's something that is under control, but I also fear that it might have blown out of proportion. This stuff is getting real. I mean, what can I say? Um, I wish I could play that song right <coughs> yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it, just like the confirmed cases. Like she rightly said, I want to believe, well, not to spread panic or... Um, create a, a state of pandemic. It could be. It could be more than that. It could be more than that. But what we have with us are those confirmed cases. And what is what is essential for people to know this point is to practice, as as recommended by the World Health Organization, social distancing, wash your hands as frequently as possible, stay away from crowded places, and do what you need to do to to um to keep your personal hygiene on 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 top. You know, it's it's pretty much unfortunate. I still feel some Nigerians are not taking this as seriously as they should. Um, with with some religious force coming out to tell us things they shouldn't be telling us at this point in time. We play down things like this, Even you know. Even governors. Mm. Um, and one particular for me is Atiku. I think it was a very responsible thing he did, coming on his Twitter page to actually let the whole world know that his son mm. is positive. I mean, a lot of men are like, how many people will do that? You know, and again, many people had some reservation about the, the state of the nation address the president gave yesterday. And mm -hmm. not so much for our fears, we are late after his speech, mm -hmm. given the fact that at the end of the day, the president of the nation could not rightly pronounce the name of the virus. I that, mean, this that's is a this is, this is a virus. Feel like he's not been following. Yeah, this is a virus that, that, that is plaguing the entire globe. And for you to come on national TV and actually tell us it's COVID one nine, it it bothered me a lot. I'm like, is it that a special advisor Garbashew and Femi Adesina didn't? rightly brief the president. Or he doesn't and, follow the news. He doesn't have to be briefed for him to know yeah. that the world this is, is what is going on. Night. And for more than half the time, he was just, oh it was just buried on, on his speech paper. I like, you can actually address us as the president of this nation 
without looking through your script speech and just say it as it is. They're, they're briefings, they, they brief you on what they're he doing in the health ministry. Need a, need a speech. Mm -hmm. All he needed to do was to reinforce the, the processes people are supposed to take right yeah. now. That's all and, he and needed what to the, do. What, the, what the federal the government is doing, what the health ministry is doing, it's as simple as that. You know, and so mm -hmm. after watching that, they're like, okay, um, it's it's pretty sad and unfortunate. Yeah. I just, I think people should take this pretty seriously. Yeah, they should. And regardless of whatever your your prejudices are, your religious beliefs are, whatever your beliefs are, which are very subjective, and it comes to question a lot of what is plaguing the entire globe this period. Mm -hmm. Think about other people and because it's not just it's about you and I about am other people also. Particularly disappointed. You know, in you. Yeah. like I'm saying that with all the pain in me, and that's quite a disappointment. Because even if, let's assume your religious leader said, oh, it is nice, faith is going to heal you. What did Governor Ekpazu say? Something about Abia State. Abia State was mentioned in mentioned the Bible. In the Bible, so Bible coronavirus so coronavirus is coronavirus. I mean, we know that we are being um, led by people that are not in touch with the reality. But are you also not in touch with the reality? But however, I also want to commend Ansa Ikweyatim yeah, for that. isolating herself immediately she got into the country. I know a few friends that have done so as well because I know a few people that came in over the weekend and they've been at home isolating themselves and watching themselves also in contact with the um, NCDC, you know, and for Harvey Weinstein. Hmm. <sighs> this well, virus has been said to be very dangerous for, for old, people old people and those yeah. with health issues and yeah. it falls in both categories. Yes. So I fear for him, I worry for him and I... I well, he's to human, be, so I really hope that he doesn't die from this. And also, Sabrina, I mean, on this table, I like, said that this lady is going to catch this thing. We laughed over it, uh, but it's you know, happened. I you think know, nobody doubted that. Yeah. yeah. No, for me, this is it, right? I mean, it's okay. Keep your religious beliefs to yourself. Whatever faith you have, keep it to yourself. In the light of what is happening right now, we don't need all of that. It's pretty much inconsequential. Mm -hmm. All right, think about, like you rightly said, think about the elderly. Think about the babies. Those people who their immune is not so strong. If you, so if you feel there's a blood somewhere you're drinking that is making you immune from this, I mean, I'm happy and I'm good for you. But you know what? Can you be just a little bit sensitive to the world and realize that this is not just about you and yeah, your religious yeah. beliefs and dogmas, that the world is going through a very uncertain and trying time. Yeah. And the most we can do as a people, as humans first, is to be sensitive to the next man. All right, so um, do all you can. We don't want to spread the virus. Yeah. It's already costing more harm. People are losing loved ones. Lives are being lost. So we don't need one, one another insensitive comment yeah. from yeah. somebody out there if just to aggravate the whole issue. I also think God. that it also this coronavirus pandemic has also um, revealed how irresponsible some Nigerians can be, especially when it comes to following rules because you feel like, I don't it know, me. because I've been seeing so many comments and it feels like a lot of Nigerians just feel like they have one special anointing that's going to protect them from the coronavirus. It's interesting and I wanted talked to, about religious um, influence on us. Was yeah, on Friday? Just on Friday. And you know, we're saying that sometimes religion uh, really blinds the logic from people's eyes. Because when you look at Italy, Italy is a very Christian state, but they have a huge amount of people that have the coronavirus. So I don't know what special anointing we think we have in Nigeria as Christians that would protect us or shield us from the coronavirus. Because I've seen so many people saying different things that their faith protects them from this and I'm like okay fine your faith would work for you but what about your neighbor who is not a Christian or what about whoever it is that is not that does not subscribe to your faith then what about that person I just feel like um this period it has just revealed you know how irresponsible some people can be and how we have a sense of we are very special that nothing can affect us and I hope that going forward a lot of people will just drop that mentality and use their brains and use their you know their sense mm. you know I, I just I just didn't remember to say into the group, I was hoping I could share one of my tweets I put out this morning um, because I had, I had an argument with a friend yesterday and it was on this religious stuff. I'm like, what is happening? It's beyond your belief and your religion, man. Don't do this. All right. I said that's something that was very, 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 um, that was very correct, politically and socially correct, because I'm sorry, um, some religious houses had gatherings yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's so, appointed. All right. The, the, go the government, they, they put out a law that no guidance of sorts should hold. And then some people defy that. I haven't had a church or no church in Abuja. I mean, if there's anything to go by, I actually took permission from the minister of the FCT to <laughs> still gather. Mm. And in, in the light of me, I'm sorry, no country in the world is run by the Bible. It's run by laws and the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And in the light of the Constitution, your Bible is not supreme over the Even Constitution. Even the Bible says you have to obey and the laws of the it. land. You know, and I did go ahead and I quoted where that, where that was said and gave you references to read where the Bible says, the book you say you're claiming to go by, they say, you know, no authority is established except by God and that you're bound to obey those authorities. And then someone still felt the need, even in light of your scriptures, 
that you claim you follow mm -hmm. to still have an argument. That. There's a problem. I think this is the yeah. time, again, that we'll have to reiterate the steps that people need to follow, which is definitely wash your hands regularly, use hand sanitizers, eat um, um, immune boosters, which are oh, yeah. fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. stay away, that's practice social um, distancing. distancing. If you don't have to go to work, please, please, please stay away and stay home. And um, I also need to mention the stop spreading those things that people are spreading on WhatsApp. Most yeah, of them have been news. confirmed to be fake and they only cause more panic. So if you have to spread any message, please make sure they are the instructions given by NCDC and them um, who to also help curb this virus and prevent them. Stop spreading things that will cause more harm. Please, I beg. Um, yeah, and to, to, to note here, people were busy. I was at the pharmacy over the weekend and somebody stood behind me and he was asking the pharmacies if he could get chloroquine. And the pharmacist mm, said, we don't yeah, have that true. in stock. The people who are overdosing now yeah. chloroquine because mm -hmm, they've yeah. been misinformed that, you know, you can prevent coronavirus by the intake of chloroquine. And now there's a chloroquine abuse and people are getting poisoned by it. So mm -hmm. you also want to do, not do that. Um, it's not been confirmed yet. There's a clinical trial ongoing, not until we get a test result and the government says, so, you know, it has been proven, you know, by global standards of trial. It's not even to you know, prevent it, it's, it's to, to cure. treat it. Now, so, this is it now. The people understand. who are actually, that has been tried on now because it's, there's a human testing going on. People who have not been aff affected by the virus mm -hmm. and they're in a very um, serious condition. So mm -hmm. they want to see if it does work, then they can come out and say, you know what, yes, it's potent in the, in the cure. That, um, you know, it to... doesn't prevent yeah. it. It doesn't. <laughs> to move on but also remember to take hot water like warm water just take a lot of that and be safe now moving on but still on coronavirus netflix um donates support fund amid coronavirus pandemic they are doing their bit to help those in the tv and film industry who have lost work because of the pandemic with a hundred million dollar support fund netflix is helping relieve the impact of the shutdown among the workers among its workers um the chief con mm. content officer ted sarando said most of the fund will go towards support for the hardest hit workers on Netflix owned productions around the world. Um, $15 million will be going towards third parties and non-profits providing emergency relief to out-of-work crew and cast in the countries where Netflix have a large production base. I, just, I think I just, it's very commendable. I just, I just yeah, want to commend Netflix very, very for this. Man. This is so commendable. Like, when I read this, I'm like, wow. This is far from our reality right mm, here, man, very, because very, very the, the average Nigerian MDCO's resume starts at hiring and firing. However, don't forget and then, that Netflix yeah. is still one of those that, yes, everybody's going to be affected by this pandemic, but, but they, they are still on uh, the good part, part of the bargain, right? Yeah, yeah. But, but at the end of the day, they don't have to do that. Yeah, they don't have to do that. I'm just saying. So they didn't have to do this. the whole of the MDCO's. No, I'm just markets, saying. Because a lot I of mean, MDCO's how many companies? How many, how many companies in Nigeria, mm. Netflix not losing money? To some they extent, to they will, extent, because they have to focus on production to, currently, and that's a you know, lot of money. The lost. point is, my mm. point is, the fact that they could think this up. Of course, they will. You know, it's part yeah. of their CSR. Even, even for most, so even yeah, for most organizations in Nigeria, <laughs> to let their workers stay, stay, stay home, they won't even do it. You know, because there's just that mojo to get by seeing everybody at work. I mean, we die. We gotta come here and work together and die here together. <laughs> you know, talk more of pain. People will not come to work. That is quite commendable. And so I just with many organizations with cities and I mean cities are something they can do and also extend if they it can if they it. can afford it. You know, and the least tell those people who don't have to be at work daily to stay back home. Mm -hmm. I think we should seek ways to decongest as much as possible the workplace. And kudos to the governor, executive governor of Lagos State, yeah. and Babajide Sanwuli has done something excellently well. I, I think he's he's so proactive and forefront at, at, at this right now. I just feel he I feel he's my president right now because there's so much measures he's taking and putting in place to make sure this does not go beyond what it is in Lagos State. He has asked all he has asked all he has asked all state workers to stay back home for the next 14 from days. Level one to you know, 12. and so mm -hmm. which is pretty much commendable. And so for Net Netflix to have done this. Yeah, of course. It's yeah. Very we, we can't take that away from yeah. them. So I wanted to say that Netflix is actually not the only company that has done that. Okay. Apple has done that. Google also has, you know, different companies. Also I mean, have, Google said they yeah. will work from home from like work a from month home, ago. Even they before all their staff from traveling a month ago. So, so yeah, there have been yeah. companies. You can see that a lot of international companies are at the forefront of this and they're taking initiative and they're, you know, putting regulations in place yes. to ensure that people are not suffering during this period because they understand. At the end of the day, it feels like people are finally putting humanity first. Um, and also, when you look at some countries also who have also created a relief fund for, Canada. you know, for some of their 
citizens yeah. who are homeless, who don't have jobs, you know, different stuff. And that's why um, when I look at Nigeria and I wonder if something like that can happen, <laughs> if we were to have a shutdown, looking at the increase, you know, in coronavirus oh, cases. Lewa. Because, you know, people keep on saying, <laughs> I've seen a lot of people say that, okay, we need to shut down our economy, people need to stop working. And I'm like, we have a huge percentage of our population that live on whatever it is that they can find today. Mm -hmm. There are so many people that don't, you know, I've seen so many advices, go and stock up, go and do this, but there are a lot of Nigerians that stock cannot up on which money? <clears throat> there are a lot of Nigerians that cannot afford that. So I'm wondering, what is it, when, if this thing grows beyond this, what plans does our government have I remember for someone people was who don't saying have that, enough um, money? If it was time for elections now, you see they political would, you parties know, they would distribute rice, rice they would distribute gari, and that. So I feel I like we need something like that right now. We After need that right now. Right? So they should yeah. use this yeah, to Yeah, so they, should, they can use this to start you know, their, their yeah. campaign. People you know, need this yeah. now. Another thing this has thrown out for, for many people to understand, um, especially the employees of labor, is that because many some, some of the countries of the world have shut down the economy already. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If there happens to be a shutdown right now, how remotely can people work from home? People should start thinking about it right now. The world is going digital. Like in our sphere right now, we're media. If that, if government should consider there's a, there's, a, there's a total shutdown, how can we remotely work from home? I'm going to Skype you guys. I mean, people <laughs> okay. Should start, yeah, people, companies should start thinking break, about it. You know. But when we return, we'll be here to discuss more. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I decide every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dollar, everybody feeling alright. Still make music and people are still buying. That was how they look myself, minimal are you? Mm. music is for mature minded people. I got DMs sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! Sleeping early, sleeping early. I am in danger. A group of artists have banded um, together with one sole mission to inflict physical harm on me. When you hang around the music industry um, doing my job, you expect violence. And this is coming from music journalist Joey Akan. In an article he posted in the early hours of Monday, 23rd March 2020, he says these artists are serious about their mission. They feel justified in their purpose due to some weird notion that he picks on them unfairly. They believe he is predisposed to hating on every new record um, they release or any move they make. And to silence him, they have been patrolling Lagos, seeking ways to isolate him and attack. He ends the blog post by saying he intends to inform the authorities and file the issue. Personally, for me, I feel like you should name names. Mm. This anonymous, um, whatever it is, because the fact that he has no name names, we, don't, we can't put a face to the threats that are being made. And if anything were to happen to him, we wouldn't know, you know, who it is. I feel like Do you he think should, he knows who they are? I feel like he should know. I feel like he does know who it is because he said that From they feel like wrote. they are predisposed, you know, maybe he's always writing something bad about their record. I feel like he knows the people um, in question. And this is the time for him to release those people because this is his life. His life is on the line. It's his life that is in danger. If they are threatening him, he needs to report this to appropriate authorities or just because I know that sometimes our authorities are not really reliable, but then he needs to do something more than just writing about it and making them anonymous. He needs to name names. Yeah, I feel that some certain jobs, you, in the line of jobs you put yourself in, you should expect um, things like this. And being a social critic, and not just a social critic um, of the music industry, um, Joey, should, Joey should be used to this kind of thing by now. Because you constantly put yourself out there, critics put themselves out there, and they're vulnerable to all sorts of attack, both verbally, physically, you know, uh, because there you are sitting down, objectively, though it might be perceived as biased by the persons whose art form you're like critiquing, mm -hmm. you know, because they don't understand it. Is it is in the is in the right premise to do that? Yes, I mean we need we need critics on every on every field of human endeavors, but also, albeit so, at the end of the day, 
I don't think our society is in that place whereby they take criticism so well. Many people say, mm -hmm. you know, as you just totally condemning me and telling me I'm not sure. good. No. A criticism of you is ways you could be, be better. I see criticism as ways I can do better. And not necessarily, you know, what you're, you're, you're tarnishing my image and my work. And which is how many people per perceive critici criticisms on this side. And unfortunately for Joey, he's at that receiving end. You know, and you should expect more of this, and you know the people you talk about the most, which is quite okay. Um, like she rightly said, don't, don't keep it anonymous. Name names. You're such a critic. You should name names. That's part of why you're a critic. Mm. Don't, you're not supposed to not say who they are. So if you think you have an idea of who they are, put the names out there. Fun. And then let the authorities know your life is being threatened, and whatever security you need at this point in time, you should go for it. Because from his write-up, it looks like he's actually genuinely concerned. For yeah, of course, he's, he's, he's genuinely concerned. It. I feel like he's genuinely concerned and worried. Mm -hmm. And if it has gotten to that, I feel like he should alert the authorities. For me, I, I want to look at the um, space he's playing and um, say that I think that space needs to grow more. We don't have enough music critic, um, music journalist in Nigeria. Sure. I, I think he is the only one. The only person I also knew at the time who also got a lot of threats was Osage Alunge. But Osage has moved on to other things. Um, the, the Nollywood guy. Right? Was I was going guy. there. Nollywood used to have this kind of threat and even beating up and, and, and movie producers threatening the Nollywood yeah, reviewers true. to say, oh, we're, we're only where we meet you, we'll beat you. But at this point, there are so many that you, how many people will you beat? You realize that they are just doing their job and they're getting to that point where they even sit down with these critics to have a conversation to say, okay, what did we do? in this movie, how can we be better? And for that area, I think they are better. But for music, I think we need more people playing in that field. I totally agree with it you. seems like the only authentic face that we know. Enjoy. And so anything he puts out, people are ready to grab him by the neck to say, why would you do this? But if there are two, three, four, five, six saying almost the same thing, or maybe you have three people supporting you and three people are saying, then it creates room for you to understand that there are there's definitely personal bias mm -hmm. in critiquing, but there's also a professionalism uh, um, act in it yeah. that lets you understand that it is the job. But right now, it is a very dangerous um, space for him. I don't blame him for coming out to say this. True. And I hope that he actually listens to you guys and mention names if he has proof to mention those names as well because yeah. if he doesn't it will fall back to deformation of character and another True. case would ensue so let him meet the right with the right authorities and do whatever it takes to be safe yeah and i hope nigerian creatives realize that you know when somebody critiques your work it's not an attack it's not a personal attack we just yeah. want you to do better we want mm. to see better you know productions out there in every civilized crime, it's there are roles of critics, yeah. movies, whatever it is you're doing. There are roles of one, critics. And when you read some Hollywood movies, society is not just open to a lot of things yet, and it just beats my mind. Sorry, just because you're an artist and you put out a song there and people jump to it doesn't mean the, the song is good. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't so mean open it to has to have positive yeah. feedback. Okay, so moving on from that one. I am scared of remarrying. This is coming from Sean George. She said she is an only child and all her life she has always defended herself. She said, and I quote, so right now, little things that seem like a threat to me, I could possibly overreact. It might have to take someone who truly sees me as a sister for anything um, marriage to happen again. I'm just scared. Let me carry my cartons of trouble and maintain my lane. End of quote. I think I agree with her. I mean, she's done it how many times? Three, Three times. times. And um, if she feels like she's done and she cannot handle it anymore, or she's not meeting the right people that would understand her for who she is, then, I mean, it's, it's, it's okay for her to say, I'm done with marriage. Yeah. You know, Shan, Shan George is actually a friend and a big sister of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I, I only respect her view and her opinion. She stated what it is. Now, I'm going to say this, right? The, the, the marriage, the marriage um, psychologist, did say, if you marry the first time and it ends, there's a likelihood the second time you get into it, it won't last as the first. Mm -hmm. And if you marry the third time, it's also not going to last as the second. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they made it seem, you know what, that the possibilities for the first one to work. So whatever made the first one to work, the second, third, and fourth might not work. But that's just a um, theory. Because yeah, we've seen theory. someone who left Statistics. the first one now, I'm, and I'm the second just one came forever. This is it. Left this, is it. Mm -hmm. this is it again. I mean, it's a theory and, and there are stats to back it up, but it's not that there are always exceptions. Mm. So she has all... I, what I said from my, from my mm. statement, it, there's a whole lot of personal fear. Mm -hmm. you know? And so not until she's able to conquer that, even when she meets someone who truly will embrace and accept her genuinely she has personal affairs she needs to personally deal with. And that's what everybody should realize, that um, marriage is not two halves coming to make a whole. Marriage is actually two whole coming to live their life together. So if there are personal baggages you're dealing with, 
getting into marriage is not going to fix it. You got to fix it before you go into marriage because all you're going to do is just going to bring that baggage into a marriage and it's going to cause more complications in the marriage. Mm. So those are part of the expectation. But don't you think people. marriage should be, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not married, but yeah. I think the idea of marriage should be understanding your partner's baggage and dealing with it together. No, this is it. Understanding is different from dealing with it. Your, your partner should be able to deal with their baggages because if you don't deal with it personally, mm -hmm. it's going to affect the other person because the other person also do have their own baggage they're dealing with. All right. So when you have two people dealing with baggages, it, it becomes very pretty much burdensome. It feels like she has you know? something to say. Well, personally, for me, I just feel like she has gone through three marriages. At this point in her life, she can have meaningful relationships with men without it leading to marriage. to marriage. That's just how I feel. So this fear of marriage, I feel like it's also genuine when you... I'm trying to understand where she's coming from. I've not even done, done one, <laughs> Seb. I'm, I'm scared. Do you understand? Do you understand? So like... when you've been through marriage three times, I understand the fear that she has. And it has failed. I understand the fear. See. But I'm just like, it should not affect our relationships with the opposite sex. And she should realize that not every relationship has to end in marriage. So the fear and everything, she can just like leave marriage away from her psyche yeah. for now. So let me just quickly say this, right? Um, that qu the question, let me answer the question you did ask. This is it. People say marriage makes someone responsible. That is a fallacy. <laughs> if, you're, if you're irresponsible for marriage, you're going to be an irresponsible married person. Mm. True. Does marriage come with certain responsibilities? Yes. Does it make you responsible? No. Yeah. There are many people who are married who are not responsible in their marriage. They're not even owning up to their responsibilities. So it, it, there's no magic, there's no ghost that takes over you once you're married. Whoever you are before marriage is who you're going to be in that marriage. So if the things she didn't work on before that marriage, um, you're not going to suddenly start working on those things in the marriage. I'm a slave queen before marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still be a slave queen after marriage. Okay, yeah. that's our wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel, La Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my co anchors, Nimi Dekombi and Benny Yak, and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus so TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. So Just stay with us. No.